from Cuba, and to all of you, our citizens, from here in Portland, to all our nine counties, all of us today are celebrating this day of having the first female deputy governor of our history. This is a celebration that is not only here in Wortham. It is in a youth county, in Rural County, Pandat, October, PG, Duke, PEs, all our counties. People are sitting under the tree where they are now and they're talking about the events. They're talking about having the first female duty government. This is very significant. First of all, I want to thank President Serko Kiriyadi for making this possible for Yomi State to have the first female duty government. This is a very crucial appointment, and we are proud that in the government of Yomi State. Thank you. I also want to thank the family of the duty governor, starting from her husband to her entire family, because it's not easy in our culture, it's all done, to allow a woman to get into politics. It's not easy. It takes a courage decision from a man. And they made their decision with your family, and they make it possible for us to have the female duty government. And I also encourage other women who are aspire to serve, that you can also do the same thing. I want to thank all the parties who have contributed, who have made sure that unity is possible, that we are better together. What divides us, as the people of the United States, is far more small than what unites us. All of us, we are brothers and sisters. We are relatives, cousins, uncles. There is no any difference. But what divides us is what we call politics. A politics that has been passed on from many layers. There are people who say that it has to be my way. If it's not my way, let it not go. That's the politics that I've seen in these past years. And this is a politics that has to stop. This is a politics that has to stop. Because if it does not stop, your will will not move anywhere. And if your will doesn't move anywhere, so it will not move. This country is very wonderful. It's very wonderful all over the world. And it should not be stopped from moving forward by few individuals. It will not happen here in the United States. I told people in Cuba that sometimes some of our problems here come from outside of the United States. And recently, they come from Cuba. Because people of the United States, we like to talk about things that are not the point. And we need the point. And tomorrow things start coming back up. When you say something wrong, you must be told in front of people. So then you know that was wrong. If you represent this state, you don't need invitation to come to this state. You don't need somebody to invite you to come to your own home. When I, when I come to this state, over here it was flooding. All of us have heard it. In this war town, it was covered with flood. We can't even reach the secretary. In our youth, in Duke, in, in, uh, in Tricky, our students were under the water. That representation was not seen. That representation of the national was not seen. Again, we are having this problem, a chronic problem, of our neighbor abducting children, 
Check your heart capital. Every now and then. And it's only when people of your nation try to defend themselves and strike back, then the whole nation jumps to our floor that we do something wrong. And the representation of the people of your nation in Cuba is no longer seen. Nobody is talking about it. People will talk about it only when people of Yomé decided that they have to defend themselves. All of a sudden, there's a lot of people representing that idea. That is wrong. Every single day, even today, gone wrong, we'll get a security report that people have been abducted, some have been killed. Every now and then. This is why I said that when you do it, do it with all your heart. Don't do it because people will give you credit. Don't do it because somebody will say that all was because of you. No, no, no. I am very confident on our duty government. She's somebody that I work with. She's not somebody who just come out of the blue. She's been here from the very first day I came here as governor, and she's still here. Recently, she's been awarded as the best minister in your state. That also speaks for itself. That also is speak for itself. When she was minister, I had disagreement with her for the day And those disagreements never stopped our working together as minister and a government. Never. And I hope that's exactly what she would demonstrate as duty government. And also she's somebody who's honest. Something that is very rare. In our country, honesty is a problem. She does it. It's something that those of you who have known her have seen that not only me. And that's what is needed in Jolene State. Earlier I heard someone was saying that this iron sheet is what was left after. They left your main state. I think it was eight years ago or some years back. If that was only one thing that was left, there was no road at that time. <laughs> so I think that was a mistake for itself. Now we're in Cuba in less than two hours. That tells you something. I think there was no night also. That also is for itself. But that is all, that is not what matters. The people of your nation, or the people of South Sudan, they will tell you what matters. Our people can never cultivate. We can never cultivate, we can never do fishing, we can never do any normal life without the guarantee of security. We have our founders. Our farmers are all here with us. They can never go to the bush because as soon as they go, they get killed by somebody with a gun. Our neighbor are all over the bus. Okay, here is what the Francisco government have done. People are in the area used to be one of our country. Now it's no longer one of our country. It is an administrative area by itself. And because of that, the government of Jomil State does not have any right to go and enforce the law over that. We, not, we, we really don't. It is now the responsibility of the national government to enforce the law between two administrations. If we are told to do that, we will have a capital to do so. I can probably do that. But we are not going to break the law. As I was saying by Honorable MP Biak, that we want to accept our laws. The only state will not be the first state to break the laws. We do accept those laws, and we have been, and we're still doing the same. And I'm asking you, the citizens of Germany, from the national government to the state, that is do the same thing. Let us criticize each other based on substance, based on reality, based on what each individual has done.
But when we criticize each other based on mere Inca, county, group, that, that's not positive. And as soon as you do that, I will never work with you. Never. It doesn't matter how hard you try. I will never bow down to a politic that is only prioritizing groups, community. I will not do that. As governor, I want to say it fall in front of you. But when we have politics that unite all of us, regardless of where we come from, regardless of each community we come from, that's the politics that I would, I would support as long as I'm still alive. Wherever I'm at, I will always support that. And if you are doing that, I will work with you hand in hand every single day. I have seen so much. The people are doing it. I have seen even where our problem always start. Someone will come to you and say that I'm just advising you. And I'm my room, something. There is some information. Even right now, when we leave this place, they will go to the new and they say that I have information for you. Somebody doing something there. But when you find out, likely not true, and they will pressure you to make sure that you take an action based on something that's not true. It is everywhere in our country. It is everywhere here in our state headquarters. It's everywhere, even at the National Union Group. Everywhere. But let me tell you this. There is somebody who always watched. Doesn't matter whether you tell the truth or not tell the truth. Somebody somewhere is watching. And it's God that's above us. God above us always knows who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth. And the life, the life of somebody who's not telling the truth is always short. But when you're telling the truth, the truth always shall set you free. It always said that. If we work together, we can move this state forward. If we work together, we can move this country forward. In fact, let me tell you this. The peace that we all work for so hard, the liberation struggle that so many of our heroes die fighting for, will never and should never be stopped by few individuals. This country has to move forward, it will move forward, and it must move forward. And in fact, the United States have to demonstrate that we have to move forward. And we will not do it without setbacks. There will be some of you that will disagree with the decision that will be taken by the government of the United States. But we will do so because it is the right thing at the right time. We will not do it because it only favors one group or only favors one community. We will not do that. But I know that there will be some that will not accept it. This state is the beacon of freedom. If the United States hold on, who's going to go ahead? It was said earlier by someone who spoke here that the liberation is not the United States. And we kept it on even when during the war it was difficult. But we kept the light of fighting going on because we had something that we were fighting for. And that's why I always tell people that Let's talk about our parties, but know that in the end we are one. In the end we are one. Let me ask you, who did not contribute to the liberation struggle? During those days, what other party that was there? Not only Asiatic and Asiatic. Even widows, orphans, they contribute. Chiefs used to contribute their candles, give it to as we are we were going for a fight. To every community, every payam, every woman, they contribute. Today, you can tell me that somebody who did that did not contribute, even our churches, they support our struggle with pride. 
In every church, people sit and gather. They pray for everything, but at the end, they were praying for the struggle to succeed. Every church has done that in South Sudan. Today, you can tell me that those people do not contribute. That's what it says. We should not and cannot deny that fact. And having said this, in every country, everything will be set free. It will be that at the end of this transitional period, of South Sudan will go for elections. Go for elections. Then we will ask whoever we want to represent us. That's what has to happen. Let me ask this. Imagine South Sudan without elections after the end of this transitional period. It's not good South Sudan that you want to see. Look at the struggle that we are in. Look at the financial struggle that our country is struggling. Look at this unity that our country is going through. Let us not look at elections that is a way of me being pushed out by so and so. That's not how it works. You can lose the election, but the next one you will win it. We've seen it all over Africa. Even people who've been put behind bars, arrested, come back and win elections. That's just how it works. Democracy must start, South Sudanese. It must start. We cannot just continue the transition after transition. This, this doesn't work. All the things that I've heard that we'll talk about will be set free when we have an election. When we have an elected government, elected government in the state, in the counties, in the national government, all of those will be set free. Now we're talking about Oh, so and so is not doing this, so and so is not doing this. We will not be talking about this. I understand that so and so don't get it. You don't look at that, I must be in this position, I must be here, I should be here. That's not all of us. If we don't do this, if we don't unite and elect our leaders, even this position you are claiming will not be there. It will not be. Now we're talking about suffering. This suffering will not end until we unite together. Now we've seen it. Somebody will say, if this person is not as bad, I don't want to listen to what they say. If they're not I.O., I don't want to listen to what they say. If they're not so, I don't want to listen to what they say. This will end. And so now we don't understand exactly what unity of government will really look like. We are running our government parallel. And in reality, we are projected in so many countries. There will be so many political parties. But whoever is the president, who will the presidency? Everybody will work with that person. All the parties, even people who have no political parties. Because that's the nucleus of the country. Because tomorrow it will be you. And you want all the political parties, everybody to work with you. But we don't want to accept that. This is why when we ask for cooperation, let us cooperate, let us cooperate. Tomorrow, you might be the same person who will say, oh, he's not listening, oh, she's not listening. In that case, we have a group, we have to remove him, remove her, all of, the, all of those things will not end. Because the way you do it, that's how the other group will do it. Who's going to suffer? Innocent people. Innocent people. I always keep reminding our people here that this keep our part of society, this run our government to serve innocent people. Because when we do that, everybody wins. And then tomorrow you will have a good ground where you can go and campaign for your political parties and win everybody support. But when you restrict everything, you squeeze everything, in other words, you are just squeezing yourself. 
Because when everybody else is not moving, you are still going to move. I had this agreement with so many based on our unit. But I don't believe that unity can be brought up because somebody had to give up on something that was the truth and just follow a path that is only suiting some individuals. I don't think so. I think that unity comes when we correct ourselves. But if you don't allow any room for, for correction, correction will not be made. And tomorrow, nobody will accept you to correct somebody. So I want to ask all our guests who have come from Europe that you come and visit your state a lot often. I will not send an invitation to you in Yuba that you come and visit your state. I will not do that. Because you don't need an invitation to come and visit your family. You don't need an invitation to come and see your constituents that you represent. But here is what we will do. Anybody from all our counties, any commissioner who is restricting our MPs to go to the constitution the way they represent, I will remove you. I promise you. Anybody, any political party who want to go anywhere in the United States, if they want to visit the constitution that they represent, that's your responsibility to, to ensure that they move. I've seen it in some of our counties. This has to stop. It's starting today. It has to stop. If it does not stop, whatever part of that bring you must bring somebody else that will ensure the free access, the free movement of South Sudanese. It doesn't matter what political party they're from, what tribe they're from, where they're from. They must be able to exercise their duty. They must be able to speak at the national government and the states to represent the constitution that they see. Some of our members, they represent people that they don't even know. Because they're not being allowed to go and visit the people that they represent. They're not being allowed. And that's what I was talking earlier, that if we don't prioritize the unity, nothing will work. Now even the work of the security, some of the police cannot even go to some of the countries to do their duty. And yet all the political party leaders are in Cuba sitting together. And yet the people of Dunia are still not understanding that. Who else are going to come and tell us that we have to work and move together? Only is it, are we waiting for God to come and tell us this? So this is the thing that we'll do. Peace sometimes if people are standing away, it must be enforced. And it should be enforced. And that's what I would do as governor of the United States. Anybody who wants to cause problems because he or she is blocking how the government can work, we will go wherever he or she wants to go. Because our citizens have suffered so much. If you look at the road construction that was going to North and Germany, what happened there? Did it not stop that? Who stopped it? This is not people within us. It's not any state. It's us. Our people are suffering. They don't have access to anything. And now we move as far as stopping the river. Now, thousands of checkpoints. Businesses can never go anywhere. Restrict everything. And now who's suffering? All of us are suffering. There were so many people five years ago who had a lot of money who were not sleeping hungry but now they don't have all that money they're suffering of hit every house now and this will not really stop until when we decide that we are better off together let us make sure that whether you related to somebody higher or you are a poor person we are all the same we're all equal we must respect the law and obey the law and respect ourselves. That the unity that we are doing now will never go. Will never go away. So with this, I want to thank all of you. I want to respond to what was said by our speaker. 
we've, we've been, been going, going through rough time. And, and this was rough time has been divided politics that I talk about. Divided politics on tribe. This is really dirty politics. Tribal politics never helped one person. It always destroyed everything. This is what we have seen. So many are uh, tea gathering and so many are uh, gathering. It's always that tribe, this tribe. When we sit here, do we see a big population of our community? We don't. And there was us. And I don't hear anybody talking about it. That's because we prioritize the politics of tribe. We do. Yume now is a combination of great tribe. No annual can be. Now we're not, I know this almost missing. We're not saying anything about it. We should. We must do that. As governor, I will always continue to bring it up. That in all of it, we are one. We want the same prosperity that all of us want. And the prosperity that you know what to find. I know some of you would blame me that it was you who do this, it's you who do this. No. We must make sure that we bring our community back. We have given them the land. We can make sure that this land is surveyed and immediately they have to move out and join our family. We cannot have some of our people in our own country. And I need to come. Third is that if you're sitting on top of somebody's land, if you have taken somebody's land, we want you kindly to just move out and give the land to the rightful owners. If somebody is trying to take your land based on that, oh, it was my land, no. Just give whatever wrong to somebody, to that person. That's what will bring us together. When we sit here, we need to see all ourselves. We need to see all our faces. When we have this challenge from our neighbor, that challenge we need to face it together. When an attack happened in one of our consciences, an attack on all of us. But it cannot be an attack on all of us if we segregate it ourselves. It not happen. The same thing we need to develop our town, the capital city of our state, this capital city, everybody will come here. It is not restricted that other people don't need to come here, it has to be, no, it cannot happen that way. I told people last time, if that's what we wanted, then there will be somebody else that wants a capital city that allow everybody to be free. We must make sure even Foreigner who are not supposed to but they want to leave and invest in Borton in the capital city of Bermuda State, we welcome them. We welcome them. We welcome that who's going to benefit us. They're going to come and buy our land. They're going to come and buy our goods. They're going to come and do business with us. It's us benefit. Are we failing to see that? Now in Juba, who are benefiting? The people of Central Equatorial. Even our small money that we collect here in Jomil you know, we take it to Europe. That is the one. So let's make sure that we ascend the town and allow Boston to be a capital city of Jomil you know, State. So I want to encourage you, I will ask you to work with the Jyoti governor to support our MPs who are representing us in Europe and to also ask our MPs who are representing us also to work together. Because there's disunity in the United States, also disunity at the national government. When the MPs are speaking one voice, then the state will also support that. But when the MPs are speaking different voices, supporting your community based on other communities in the United States, I would not be there. My contribution will be absent.
Because I'm not going to turn against one community and one community. But let us all unite together, work together. Let us blame each other based on reality. Not just based on that somebody say, somebody say that. To do this, there were some of our MPs who went and did lobbies in Juba. For our education, this to be shut down. That's just because something went wrong between the state parliament and the Minister of uh, Education. So instead of trying to solve the issues here, they took it to Juba and said, let's go talk to someone's office, let's move here, move here, and someone will do that. Most of that sometimes we talk to people who are not even from the United States. They will not have time to know what is truth and what is not. Whatever wrong thing you did them, they, they take actions. Is that what we want? I don't think so. But yet tomorrow we will put this policy. That's why I said let us stop this. Let us work here among ourselves. I'm willing to work with all the parties. But I'm not willing to work with a party that only prioritizes itself and lead the people of the United States. No. Let's all work together. If you go and dine and sing, ask me, I'll come and dine with you. If I am, I will come and do with you. So I'll come and do with you. But when we come to where we are serving our people, let us leave that aside. When we come out and go to play with our party and do politics, we will do the same. And so that's why I said, let us all be ready for elections. And you only say, we will be ready. We have decided already, we have given the land to the Electoral Commission, and we will start the election process. It's not only because we want one party to win or that party to win. No, it's because it would set the rule of map for democracy in South Sudan in place. This will be the game. Don't look at it as so that I would win, I would lose, I would win. No, no, no. Let's look at that. This will be the start of our peaceful democracy. So just thank you so much, people of the United States. May God bless you, may God bless you. Thank you very much.